Joan and I spent our honeymoon in Europe. My mother's people were from Sweden, from a small fishing village near Bostad, where a picture asks to be taken in any direction you look. From the fishing village, we went to Helsingborg, which is like all the rest of Sweden, clean and colorful. We could have spent our whole month in Sweden, but we'd promised ourselves a trip to Paris. Originally, we'd planned to go by air, but we saw a poster in a travel agency window. Say, this looks like an interesting way to go to Paris. What, this? I thought we were going to go by plane. I know, but since we have enough time, we might as well try the coach. Linya bus? Sure, let's give it a whirl. Okay. This was to be a new and unusual experience in traveling. A stewardess. And look what they're loading into the luggage trailer. Two drivers, never a tired driver at the wheel. Before we'd gone a mile, we took to sea. We drove onto the ferry, which took us across the Orison, the strait that separates Sweden from Denmark. Along the fine Danish highways, we rolled toward Copenhagen. It's the capital of Denmark, and we had been told it was one of the most interesting cities in Europe. So we left the coach in Copenhagen and rented bicycles to see the sights in this bicycle-mad city. We saw Hambra, the old fish market, and Amalienborg Square with the Royal Palace. We saw the stock exchange with its wonderful tower of twisted snakes that make it look like a corkscrew. My pockets are always full of sugar because Joan likes to make friends with horses. We were reminded of a character from Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tales when we saw the statue of the Little Mermaid. She is the emblem of modern Copenhagen. In the summertime, Denmark lives in boats. Its people have been dependent on the sea since the time of the Vikings. Back in Copenhagen, we again found ourselves in the usual traffic jam of bicycles. Everyone who visits Copenhagen should see Tivoli, the wonderful amusement park in the heart of the city. Even from up there, we could hear the music of the Tivoli guards. grammar school boys, just youngsters. The main attraction of Tivoli is the pantomime theater with its wonderful classic performance unchanged for 200 years. The clown is the symbol of Tivoli. half a dozen superb restaurants in the park. Night in Tivoli brings colored lights and fireworks, a 4th of July celebration every night.
Denmark is a land of islands, strung together with bridges. Back on the coach again, we headed south, past the seaside dairy farms, toward our destination for the evening, near the German frontier, the town of Obenro. Next morning, we rolled into northern Germany, through the medieval towns of Schleswig-Holstein, and then into war-ravaged Hamburg. The wide autobahn spread us across North Germany toward the Netherlands. Since Linyabus travels only by daylight, we miss none of the scenery. Our hotel that evening was at Bukerlo, in the heart of the forests of eastern Holland. We weren't prepared to find surf bathing so far from the sea. The wave machine in the hotel pool makes breakers any size you want. We ordered ours large. This was our first anniversary. We'd been married a month. So we took a table for two while some of our fellow passengers danced and gathered in congenial groups over cups of Dutch coffee. All this food and best hotels was included in the price of our ticket. Next day we headed west again toward Rotterdam. For refreshments, all we had to do was buzz the hostess so we enjoyed cold drinks from the coach's own refrigerator while we rolled through the polderland, the rich pastures reclaimed from the sea by the industrious people of Holland. The woman was particularly charmed by the washroom aboard that let her pretty up so she reached our stops ready for sightseeing. We had arranged to take another stopover at Rotterdam. Not far from Rotterdam is Kinderdijk, where we found dozens of windmills built long ago to pump the farmlands dry. Also nearby is the lovely old town of Delft, a snapshot as paradise. Probably the best way to see Delft is to take a boat along the peaceful canals which are more numerous than streets. Landmark of Delft is the old church, started in the 13th century. It has tilted like this for 500 years. The new church was finished before Columbus sailed from Spain for the New World. There was a carnival in Delft the day we were there. With sign language, Joan made friends with a little Dutch girl who stood wistfully by the merry-go-round. They got on together. It was hard to say who had the most fun. We caught the next coach to Paris, arriving at the Holland-Belgium frontier early in the afternoon. If you drive a car in Europe, frontiers can be troublesome, but there were no such worries for us. The hostess took our passports and a briefcase of documents. In 10 minutes, she was back, and we were on our way toward Brussels leaving the poor motorists still arguing with the frontier guard. For all I know, they were still arguing when we reached Brussels in the afternoon. This gave us time to visit the Grand Place, the great square surrounded by palaces built in the Middle Ages. There's a flower market in the Grand Place, 
where you can choose from among the finest roses in Belgium. Brussels is also famous for lace. I asked Joan what she would like from this shop, but she just couldn't make up her mind. So I planned a surprise. I knew by the way she said, oh, Jack, that my choice had been a success. From Brussels, we went south, across Belgium, and then across the broad fields of northern France. So to Paris where we left our linear bus near the Arch of Triumph on the Champs-Élysées. Paris, Place Concorde, the Opera, Place Vendôme, Names familiar to everyone who has ever heard of the Queen of Cities. The Louvre. Notre Dame. The bookstalls along the Seine. Paris. Our city of dreams, thrilling stop on a road of romance. 